really wonderful to be back in the house of the Lord. Another good opportunity to stand and do the will of the Father. We're here tonight in our Wednesday night Bible study at uh, Romans chapter 15. Romans 15 tonight. So we want to uh, ask the Father to, uh, to bless in our lesson. Let's bow our heads. Precious Father, we come to you thanking you for another blessed day, Lord, that you've given us. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity to stand. Ask, Father, that your word would go out and land on the world ground this evening, Father. And all these things we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Paul's going to be quoting a lot tonight. A lot of different places that Paul quotes different scriptures from the Old Testament. And uh, he is kind of proving his credentials to the Romans in this letter is what he's trying to do. He's trying to uh, not boast himself by no means, but <clears throat> just trying to utilize the scripture how he sees fit. So we'll get right on in. To the scripture, We've got a, quite a few verses this evening, 33, and we'll try to get it finished all through. So, Verse number one, we then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Paul's saying here in this word infirmities, this is the only place in the whole Bible that this is used. And it is in your Greek 771, uh, scruple of conscience. A doubt, in other words, is what he's saying. So let's read it like that. So when we then that are strong ought to bear the doubt of the weak and not to please ourselves, is what Paul's trying to say. Two, let every one of us please his neighbor for his good edification. And that is good. That is true. That we ought to encourage one another to get into God's word. Not only can you ask your brother or remind somebody, hey, have you got into the word? But to lead somebody. Yeah. It's one thing to ask them, have you got into God's word? Have you done this? Have you figured this out? Do you understand this? But it's something other in that to show somebody how to utilize the tools properly. You need a strong concordance yeah. to verify the Hebrew and the Greek. If you do that, just as we just done in verse number one, you will see that it will definize the word. It will take that word and it will expand it and it will make a whole new view for you. By doing that, you can carry on in each scripture as Paul begins to speak, as any of the apostles begin to speak or disciples, whichever may be speaking. If you have a trouble learning, I suggest get you a Strong's Concordance and utilize it to bring out the word. Amen. All right. Verse number three, for even Christ pleased not himself, but as it was written, here we go, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. Paul here is quoting Psalm 69. I'm going to turn there real quick. Psalm 69. And 7 through 9 is what he's quoting. Because for thy sake I have borne reproach. This is Christ speaking. Shame hath covered my face. And we know that to be true. Uh, they sped upon him and hit him. And they placed a crown of thorns upon his head. So it was a reproach. Yeah. Verse 8. I am become a stranger unto my brethren and an alien unto my mother's children. In other words, they didn't even recognize him after they had gotten through. 9. For the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. And the reproaches of them that are reproached Thee are fallen upon me. Paul uses this scripture to build us up, to let us know that it is important that we continue on to encourage one another to teach the word of God, encourage one another. It can almost be embarrassing for some when you kind of correct somebody in the word of God. So you must be gentle when you do these things. You've got to be wise 
as a serpent, but harmless as a dove. And understand how the feelings of some are, especially if they've studied and they're trying to gain it. And there's nothing worse when you knock them off their axes and they, you know, they assume that they had it. But we must be careful, okay? Verse number four. For whatsoever thing was written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Uh, this is true. Uh, we shall be in the word daily. We should all be in the word daily. I encourage you to find a time in your day. Mine, this is me personally, mine is as soon as I wake up. I began to get my thoughts together. I began to get into the book. Uh, and and it, sometimes I just randomly read. Uh, a lot of it is things that I have read before, and it brings back remembrance. Some of the things that I'm not too familiar with as far as uh, common scripture, and it helps. And before you know it, you're, you're gaining knowledge, you're gaining wisdom. And I, I have went as far as read something in the morning, and it just intrigued me all day long. Couldn't wait till I got back home and got a chance to dissect that and get it out. So the encouragement of reading, uh, your devotions. Whenever it may be, I encourage you to do it daily. Daily is a good thing. Amen? Amen. And we know that we have this confirmation of exactly what Paul said in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 10 and 11. We quote this a lot also. But he said here, Now all these things happen unto them for in samples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. So we know that Paul is telling us that these things are here. This Old Testament is here for a reason. All these things were done for in samples for you and I. Amen. Okay? Amen. Verse number five. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus. By seeking the true meaning of God's word, you are like-minded. It's harder to find somebody like-minded than you would believe. Right. Amen. If you are stuck in a traditions of man and believing the things that come out of a man's mouth versus searching it through the word of God yourself, then you might can find somebody like mine. Amen? Amen? But when you find somebody that understands the Word of God, understands the mysteries of the Word of God, and can plainly tell you, friend, you've got a friend. Amen. Amen? You've got a brother in Christ, a sister in Christ. Amen? So that's what he's saying here. Verse number six, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is the only reason, okay? Yes. To glorify God. Yes. God is the one who has orchestrated all of this book together for you and I. Amen. And it is an example, and it is a warning. It is all sorts of things to help you and I to stay on that straight and narrow. Amen? That's what God wants us to do. And that's what Paul's saying here. Now, again, remember, Paul is writing this letter to the Romans, okay? And he is encouraging them to stay in the Word. Seven, wherefore receive you one another, as Christ also received us to the glory of God. The Holy Spirit will harmonize one with another. When you began to talk about a subject, a scripture in the word of God, and the other person understands, before you know it, the Holy Spirit is working amongst you. Christ said, where two or three are gathered together, I shall be in the midst. And we know that that spirit of God will be in the midst. And I, hopefully you have, and I have many a time, Walmart parking lot, uh, in the pasture field, it don't matter. Strike up a conversation about the word, and if one understands and another understands, 
Friend, you've got a conversation in the last quite a while, amen? Uh, the Holy Spirit don't know much about time. <laughs> I've sat and talked for hours or better out in the parking lot of the church and didn't realize time went by like that, amen? So, But that's what he said. Verse number eight. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. Now this circumcision he's talking about is uh, those of the covenant, Israel, okay? That's who he's speaking about here. Verse 9, And that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as it is written, For this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles and sing unto thy name. Now Paul here is quoting Psalms 18 and 49. Again, I've said that Paul does a lot of quoting here in this uh, letter to the Romans just to, well, to edify and to bring out what he's trying to say, but he utilizes a lot of scripture here, amen? Verse number uh, 10, and again he saith, Rejoice ye Gentiles, with his people. And we ought to know this. This is in Deuteronomy 32, verse 43. And let's turn over there real quick. Deuteronomy 32 and 43. It says, Rejoice, O ye nations. Now Paul calls it what? Rejoice, and that the Gentiles might glorify uh, for his mercy. Oh, excuse me. And again, 10. And again he says, Rejoice, ye Gentiles. That's what he says here. But over here in the Deuteronomy, it says, Rejoice ye nations with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants and will render vengeance to his adversaries and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. And we know that to be true. That's futuristic. That's to come uh, of the Messiah when he comes. But that's what Paul is trying to quote here. Again, verse number uh, 11 and again, praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, and laud him, all ye people. And Paul here is quoting Psalms 117, verse 1 and 2. Uh, Paul is easing himself into this conversation with the Romans because of the commission that was given to Paul to preach unto the Gentile nation. And he wants them to be understood that, you know, he is definitely doing his part. Verse number 12. And again, Isaiah say, there shall be a root of Jesse, and he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, in him shall the Gentiles trust. And this is Isaiah 11.10. And uh, we know that this, again, is something that the Lord commissioned unto Paul. He had told his disciples to do what? To go into the lost house of Israel, unto the lost sheep of Israel. But Paul, he commissioned him to the Gentile nation. Amen? Amen. And that to preach the word. And uh, we've seen this throughout the earlier part of Romans how Paul has spoken about that. But yet here, Isaiah, he's quoting here, there shall be a root of Jesse, and he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, in him shall the Gentiles trust. But the Gentiles will not trust the Lord Jesus Christ until the millennium. Okay, You won't have that whole nation trusting and believing until the millennium. Okay? Verse number 13. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now see, the Gentiles have trouble in believing in Christ. But we shouldn't. As a Christian nation, we shouldn't hardly ever run across anybody that has a problem believing in the Lord Jesus Christ although you very well may. It's not as common as you will find in the Gentile nations. But today, there's many that confess different things. So, but verse 14, 
And I myself also am persuaded of you, my brethren, that ye also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. In other words, able to teach one another is what Paul said. He said, I, I'm pleased to believe that you're able to do that with the knowledge that you have. Verse 15, Nevertheless, brethren, I have written the more boldly unto you in some sort, as putting you in mind because of the grace that is given to me of God. In other words, again, to preach the gospel unto the Gentiles and Israel. Now, Paul didn't go just unto the Gentiles. He went abroad. He went all that he possibly could. We get on down here, you'll see where Paul went. Verse uh, number 16. That I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And again, this is Paul's uh, commission that was given unto him by the Lord. 17, I have therefore whereof I may glory through Jesus Christ in those things which pertain to God. And Paul's saying here that uh, he's taking things from the Old Testament and he's able to teach in the New Testament. He's able to teach these letters here, you see, by utilizing the Old Testament and through what Christ has spoken. 18, for I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ hath not wrote by me to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed. Paul's saying here that uh, you ought to stay in the book. Stay in the book. Stay with what Christ wrote. If you're wanting to lead somebody to the Lord, don't bring up things of the world. Stay in the word. Stay where the scriptures will help. The Bible says that faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so by encouraging someone to come to Christ, you must use the word of God. Amen. You can't beat around the bush. It must be God's word. Amen. 19. Through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illicum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Now, I looked this up. I was curious about how far Paul had went. And I'm not sure if anybody here realizes this, but Jerusalem to Illicum, if I can say that, I can't even say it. It's right about a thousand miles apart one from another. And th this this state right here today is uh, Albany on the northwest side of Greece is where it's at. So he has went way down into the providence of Rome. It's where he has went way down next to the shore from Jerusalem. And what he was doing, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but... I'll go ahead and read 20. Yea, so have I strived to preach gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. So in other words, Paul was going on the outskirts of areas where they have never heard of Christ. They have never heard of Jesus, you see. And that's why Paul had done all he could and, and to go all the way around and, and to spread the gospel. And that's why Paul set up so many churches and uh, funded and brought together the Gentiles and the Jews together, you see. I'm getting ahead of myself, but it's okay. 21, but as it is written, to whom he was not spoken of, they shall see, and they that have not heard shall understand. And he's speaking here of the Gentile nation, okay? You can find that. Let's look over there. Luke 12. Luke 12 and 48. 
But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of strife shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever was it given, of him shall be much required. And to whom uh, men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. And in this scripture here, I was going for, for whom so much was given, of him much is required. And that's exactly what Paul was done. It was given to him to do this will of the Lord. And in your same aspect, take this scripture and apply it to your life. The more you begin to learn, the more you hear, the more it settles into your mind, you agree with it, with the word of God, and you nail it down. Remember that God has been good to you, and he has shared his word with you, and he's enlightened you through the Holy Spirit for understanding and wisdom. Therefore, where much is given, much is required. Amen? Amen. It's required unto you to find those that may be right on the verge of being right. Amen? Right on the vine, as one would call it. Ready to understand some of the mysteries of the Word of God. Verse 22. For which cause also I have been much hindered from coming to you. Why was he much hindered? Because they were hungry, amen? Many of them were hungry in this area. They had never heard this gospel before. They had heard tell of the law, but they had never heard tell how that one had died for their sins and how he had died and rose on the third appointed day and how he has set at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and I. That's the gospel that Paul was trying to teach. And to preach, amen? amen? And giving these people hope. These people had hope at this time. And they, it was a newness of life to them, amen? Uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 came into view for them. They became new creatures. They liked this newness. So we'll see what happens here. Verse 23. We'll read 23 and 24. But now having no more place in these parts... And having a great desire these many years to come unto you. He's talking to who? Talking to the Romans, okay? He's talking to Rome here. Whensoever I take my journey into Spain, I will come to you, for I trust to see you in my journey and to be brought on my way thitherward by you, if first I be somewhat filled with your company. Now, this is what Paul's doing, verse 25. But now I go unto Jerusalem to minister unto the saints. This ministering unto the saints, as you get on down into verse 26, well, let's read it real quick. For it hath pleased them of Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor saints which are at Jerusalem. And that's what he had done. He was carrying the purse back to the Jews, you see, back to Jerusalem to encourage them by the Gentile nations that had wanted to help out, you see, and want to become part of this love, this Christianity. Amen. That's what Paul was trying to get through to them. 27. It had pleased them barely, and their debtors they are. For if the Gentiles have made have been made partakers of their spiritual things, their duty is also to minister unto them in carnal things. So there you go. We see how that they had no problem. Paul didn't have to beg. I'm sure he didn't have to beg. These people wanted to be a part, and they wanted to help out, you see. We're talking about a time when Christianity wasn't popular, okay? It was a time when people did without. Christians and and uh, priests and things of that nature, saints of God that love the Lord, they did without for quite often. And that was one of the messages I'm sure that Paul would bring to these Gentile nations that, hey, you know, we've got people that love the Lord. You, you, you think this sounds good. We've got some up here being persecuted. And Paul knew all about the persecution. For he was one who struck the first of persecuting. Man. So 
we see here that Paul knows exactly what he's talking about. Verse 28. When therefore I have performed this and have sealed to them this fruit, what's the fruit? This money, amen. I will come by you into Spain. 29. And I am sure that when I come unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. This fullness of the blessing is through the Spirit, amen? That wisdom that Paul carried with him, that knowledge. And Paul had a lot going for him. He had a lot of experience through the Word and through the experience from not only uh, on the street, uh, on, the, on his way to Damascus, but also the ministering and the uh, persecution that he had seen and the glory that he had gotten through that persecution, amen? amen, through what God had done for him. So he says here, 30, now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake and for the love of the Spirit that you strive together with me in your prayers to God for me. That's exactly what Paul was asking. Please pray. <laughs> Pray for me as I continue on and try to do my part. 31, that I may be delivered from them that do not believe in Judea. Did you see that? These would uh, very likely be the Kenite that he was talking about. Amen. He's talking about the Kenites that would be wanting to behead him and to kill him. But he said that I may be delivered from them that do not believe in Judea and that my service, which I have for Jerusalem, may be accepted of the saints. Now, this is a problem. <laughs> what Paul's trying to do here is because he's going against their tradition. He's going against these Jews, their tradition. And their tradition was that the Gentiles were to have no part. No part in their love for God. Nor was their God going to love the Gentile. But remember, why did Jesus go to the cross? For all, brother. Amen. For God so loved Israel, the Jews. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. A little harder for that Gentile nation because of that tradition they had been in. Now, let me stop right there. This same aspect goes in the same sense of way that you have to talk to your brothers and your sisters that you love, and they are still stuck in traditions of man. When you begin to try to encourage and try to be a help to somebody, before you know it, your name is slandered, and your name is put on the back shelf, and you are uh, 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 nothing but a troublemaker. I've been called uh, one that goes against the grain. <laughs> and uh, But that's okay. I know what I believe. Amen. Amen? Amen. And I am firmly planted like a tree by the water. Amen. By knowing what I believe. And it doesn't matter to me who it her lips. When I speak, I try to help somebody. I'm not trying to be better than the next guy or act as if I, I know something. Friend, I'm nothing. I am nothing but a man. But God has bestowed his love upon us. I'm talking about us. Those that understand the word and can take in God's word. Some people have such a hard time taking in the true word of God. They are so put into a commercialized church, they don't understand what scripture is. They think that going through mission fields and, 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 and working and giving money to that, it, it, it's just amazing all of the different aspects that people will have about the word of God. But friends, it's where the rubber meets the road is where it matters. What do you know about the future? 
What do you know about the coming of the Lord? What do you know about the first Christ that comes? Are you prepared? Do you know that the first one that comes is the Antichrist? And the more you get into this thing, you see, it begins to fall a little way to the side because people don't want to hear that. They want to believe in the rapture theory. They want to believe in that any moment doctrine. They want to believe in something that is not real and hold on to that. And it's a shame that they are wasting away. Time is flying by, friends. I don't know if you've said that lately, but uh, yeah. let me go ahead and say it right now. Boy, time is flying, is it not? Amen. It seems like it was just a couple of years ago when we started this little church. Yes, and it's amazing what God can do with a little bit of time. Amen. He's able to help you and to teach you and Amen. to encourage you and to build you and to uh, place your feet on a solid rock. Amen. Amen. And help you. But again, those that continue to disagree and they want to hold on to those traditions of man. That's what Paul's trying to say here. Verse number 32 that I may come unto you with joy by the will of God and may with you be refreshed. What Paul's prayer is, is that when I come, I want to know that I am welcome. I want to know that you are prepared and you're waiting for me. Amen. There's nothing better to know that somebody is encouraged by your speaking. Amen. Amen. Nothing better to know that people are encouraged by the word of God, yeah. God's yeah. word and how it begins to apply to their life. Amen. If you take God's word and you secure it in your mind and you understand how these things are going to transpire, friends, you have no worries. How come I have no worries, Brother Randall? We know that the world is going to uh, just come to an end and these things are going to happen. Well, maybe it will. But you know, I've seen in God's word where it tells us that we're not appointed unto wrath, but unto salvation. Amen. We have these in samples of the things that happened to the patriarchs. We know that God is going to protect us if we stay in his word and we prepare ourselves for that to come. Yeah. How do you think that the children of Israel... When Moses began to instruct them what to do, they had no earthly idea of what to do. God sent down the word to Moses. Moses passed the word on to the people, and the people tried to follow the best they could. They were stuck in a bad tradition. It's been a, it's been a, a, a problem for many, many generations. This traditions of man ruins God's word. It makes God's word void, and it's dangerous. And all it is, is somebody dreaming up something out of their heart. The Bible calls it prophesying out of their own heart. Yes. And God says, I'm against that kind of thing. When you prophesy out of your own heart and you put words and you say that God said, God said, when I have never said, right. why do you do these things? And that's what causes people's minds to turn. Amen. God forbid our Father's word ever becomes boring. Amen. If it becomes boring to you and you can't enjoy it any longer, something needs to happen in your life. Amen? Amen. There is too much excitement throughout God's word. I mean excitement through the knowledge and the wisdom and the many things that God will bring out. When you think you've got it all, friend, start it, Genesis 1 again. Yep. And see if that Bible doesn't begin to show you some more things. Amen? Amen? That's the encouragement about the Word of God. We are not going to get it finished. Right. Amen? Amen? You will not finish that course of studying the Word of God. Amen. You will never finish. Right. How some people say that I've retired from pastoring. I've retired from teaching and preaching. You know, the pastoral part might be a little bit understood trying to be a leader amongst the people. But when you've got a people that understand like-minded and know the word of God, the pastoring part begins to get even easier as you get older. Yeah. The people are wiser. Yeah. 
The people are more concerned. They have more compassion. Right. Therefore, the job gets easier. Amen. 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 That's why it's an encouragement to stay in the Word of God and to keep good people around you that understand the Word. Amen. Amen. Verse number 33, to come to a, hope, a close here. He said, Now the God of peace be with you all. Amen. And Paul's encouragement was to get back to Rome as fast as he could. He wanted to do God's will, but he also wanted to go to Rome. And Father had a way of detouring Paul throughout his ministry and keeping him from going to Rome. And uh, as you study out God's word, you'll find out why uh, it wasn't that popular for Paul to go to Rome. Amen. All right, that's chapter 15. we got one more chapter left in the book of Romans. It's been a wonderful, wonderful study. Uh, Brother Paul has uh, many different ways of teaching and uh, so many different uh, mysteries that Paul brings out and begins to teach us. Uh, but it's just been a wonderful, wonderful study. So tune back in again uh, for Romans 16. And uh, until then, may God bless.